so hi guys so the sony a6400 has obviously been announced and you know it's on its way um the bit i'm interested in though is the animal iaf tracking and obviously object tracking that's being updated um obviously the a6400 is coming with it but obviously the sony a9 the a7r3 and the a7 are going to get the big update as well um which will obviously allow them to track um, animal eyes and objects better um which is pretty awesome but i've already experienced a little bit of that which um happened over a year ago and i've got the rx10 mark 4 and uh obviously a7r3 but on the a7r2 as well um a few times i've been at the zoo uh, taking pictures of animals and you get to the monkeys so you've got the little squirrel monkeys things like that that the camera obviously we must have very similar facial shapes and it's picked up with the uh the eye autofocus um it has also worked once on a cat my uh, my sister's cat so i took a picture of it actually locked onto his eye um, and also face tracking as well seemed to work randomly but it did work um but here's a little clip from one of my videos that i'd already done from the zoo with the um uh with the iif um, working on the squirrel monkeys um, this is a squirrel monkey, so when I arrived at the zoo, the squirrel monkey was bouncing around all over the place, and I was amazed to find that, just out of interest, I pushed the um, eye autofocus button, and it focused on the eyes. And I thought, well, okay, similar to a human, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, it's sharp, sharp. So, that was when I first experienced it with the RX10 Mark IV, and it, it worked quite well. Um, and it didn't just do it once it was doing it multiple times when I was taking pictures of them bouncing around and it was tracking them absolutely fine and that was on the RX10 Mark IV so that's got that has got a uh, the Sony A9 uh, autofocus system in it so kind of understand why that that worked quite well um, but back to the A6400 so this is um, obviously the in-between part of between the A6300 and A6500 um, and uh, even though people are talking about the A7000 or whatever, um, it's still using the the same battery. So the smaller size battery that we've been used to on the uh, the A6300 and A6500 and A6000, and also the RX10 Mark IV, which I, I have got. Um, but obviously, a few updates and everything probably. Um, and uh, it just it's tweaked, I guess. Um, obviously. 24 megapixels and uh, a tilt screen which we've had before um, I think on the A5000 had one um, so oh quite 200 of a second that's, oh, blimey, that's, so a AF is very very quick um, yeah same process as the A9 okay um, so very very quick camera and well say $900 so I'd imagine about, around about just under a thousand pounds um, and they've increased I mean so the RX10 Mark IV and the A9 are doing one three hundredth of a second so I mean, it's not it's hardly going to be noticeable but obviously in the world of um, following things uh, with the autofocus it's obviously very quick um, so obviously two hundredth of a second is uh, is even even faster slightly uh, not that I don't know if we'd ever actually uh, notice the difference um, and also advanced real-time IF so um, you know it's obviously tracking constantly um, I do quite like the fact that you'd be able to just push the um, shutter button in just a little bit obviously just pre-focus kind of thing before we take the shot and it's actually automatically going for the eyes um, where at the moment you obviously push a button and uh, when you want to uh, so that's that's quite cool and obviously apparently you can uh, swap eyes as well so you'll be able to um, think yes exactly what we need in the cameras is um, time-lapse so individual interval recording for time lapse videos um awesome um one thing i really love doing and one of the benefits of um the mirrorless systems especially the sony's is that it won't use the um you don't need to use the mechanical shutter you can use it in silent mode um so you're not actually using wear and tear so obviously back in the old days when we were using dslrs and uh, uh, you know every single time it would take an image that mirror and the uh the shutter were firing so you you know you're doing you could do a ten thousand uh, shot um, time lapse you know it's ten thousand actuations on your on your shutter that you didn't really need um, but uh, this this camera actually looks like quite a cool bit of kit um, 
So the real-time tracking maintains type recognition and comes to tracking inputs, depth, data. Uh, to work video too. Okay, so that's cool. So it's now hopefully going to be following and tracking objects whilst in video. Um, that's really cool. Um, like I say, the Sony A7R3 and the A7 III are also getting the real-time autofocus tracking for animals. The updates are coming in April, so not long. Um, but really, really cool. Um, cameras are cameras at the end of the day, and they've got so good that actually a new camera coming out now doesn't really excite me all that much. But when they update a camera that you already own and giving you a few, a few extra um, sort of features you didn't have before, that's really cool. Um, I'm really happy about that. And um, it just, you know, if, you, if you've got an A6300, A6500, um, an A7 um, 3 or an A7R3 or an A9 um, or even the A7R2 and the A7S2 they're the modern cameras I mean they're all of them are awesome and if you're a Nikon user and you've got one of the um, the new Z uh, mirrorless cameras or even the um, the Canon um, EOS R they're all amazing um, it's just how you learn to use them you need to learn these cameras inside and out and people moan about each other's menu systems and all that sort of stuff if you give me a Sony, I've used them so long, such a long period of time now that I can tell you, you know, push menu and go in like two steps down one, whatever, and I know exactly where I've got to find what I need to find. But actually, the function buttons you've got on the back of the camera, you can set so much up before you, so you don't. I very rarely go into the menus, um, and you've also got your star favorite menu um, bit where you can save your favorite most used. Um, functions that you need to go into the menu for like formatting your card for example um, and, uh, and things like that so that makes a huge difference if you gave me a Canon I could sit there for an hour and try and work out what the hell I need to uh, with the menus and stuff same with the Nikon you know they're all different and it, unless you use them daily um, or you know just very regularly that you, you're going to struggle to find the um, the way through the menus and they're all going to feel a bit alien um, so that's when I see that I just think I just laugh because I think you know they're all slightly different and nothing's perfect. Um, the only thing I really wish the updates would allow us is um, a bit more with the touchscreens on the back of the Sony, so you can flick through pictures and you know actually touch your touch the screen for the um, for the menu system, so you can actually flick through and actually just adjust things quickly on the touchscreen. Um, not that it really matters too much, but the flicking through pictures and pinch to zoom and things like that, even though you can double tap on a picture and it will zoom in. Um, the one thing I do like on the uh, uh, the Sony's and when you're actually previewing an image is the fact that if you have used eye eye autofocus, when you double, when you actually zoom in on the picture, it goes for the eyes wherever it, where the actual focus point was. So that's actually really good. So it automatically does that, so you can see exactly what should have been in focus. I'd imagine it does it for the Canons and Nikons as well. I'm sure they've thought of that. Um, it's probably nothing new. But um, yeah, so um, I won't be buying an A6400. It's not my thing. I'm in, well involved in the full frame, but I do use the RX10 Mark IV. And anybody who's been following me for ages, the 24 to 600 mil f2.4 to f4 lens is brilliant. And the focusing system is brilliant. And the fact that it's a massive all-in-one package. It's not 100% perfect, we know that. And maybe Sony might do a firmware update. Or they'll bring out the 5, Mark V version. And um, it's obviously going to have all the um, autofocus updates and everything like these will. So um, it would be interesting to see. And I do wonder if they'll actually put the um, the newer battery in, which is obviously larger, um, for the next the next. Um, body which I will will purchase because it's one of the best cameras I've ever owned the Mark um the RX10 Mark IV. It's so usable um and it's it's a very prominent part of my um camera bag where I've got the A7R3 and um the RX10 Mark IV sits there as well and I utilize that quite a lot side by side um for work and obviously for obviously just snapping away for pleasure. Um yeah, so basically I just wanted a quick chat about the um, IAF. Um, I will put a link to that actual whole video where I was actually at the zoo and um, with the RX-10 Mark IV. Um, and you can actually see um, me, obviously, with, uh, with taking pictures of the animals and stuff. And 
yeah, I mean, IAF is going to make a big difference, especially if you've got an animal that's got a relatively long nose and you're trying to get the eyes in focus and uh, it's moving around. Uh, and quite often, obviously, the autofocus will actually go for the closest object. Which if it's looking at you, it's going to be its nose. So the eyes will be out of focus. But obviously, if you can bypass that very quickly without having to um, obviously move, your, move your focus points around manually, that's where it's going to come to its own. So uh, I just wonder how many animals they've actually programmed into it, you know. Um, could be very interesting. So they're going to have to do a lot of angles, and I, I, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's a bit mind blowing, but uh, you know, it's um, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, that was it. Um, I'll like say I put the link down for that actual video that I did quite a while ago. So I've quit watching that. That was taken at Drew Siller's um, zoo in East Sussex, and uh, that was a nice day, and we got some cool shots there. And uh, yeah, so anyway, please subscribe. Please click the notification bell. And uh, I'll be back with some more videos. Um, I've got a, a 10 stop ND filter um, that's just arrived um, for the RX10 Mark IV. Not really done any long exposures of the RX10. And I just wanted to see how well that sensor holds up with uh, with obviously a, a very dense filter on the end of the, uh, the lens. Um, to see how that actually... does it, Is it going to affect any quality issues or anything like that with that much a 10 stop... Um, ND filters, so it should be interesting to find out. It may absolutely be fine. I don't actually know. Um, I used them on obviously the uh, uh, full frame sensors, and they seem to be it seems absolutely fine. But I just wanting a smaller sensor, will it struggle? Who knows? Anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you soon.